The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the August 16th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life, it's happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can send me an email. Send that off early and send it to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Mix back out here. You got the Dow up 114, the S&P up 8, the Nasdaq 100 up 18, the Russell's off 3, the semis are down 17. Gold is trading off 40 cents. Uh, silver's up one penny. Lights Recruit is off nine cents. Natural gas is down eight pennies. 30 Treasury is up two ticks. Printed out at 120.05. Now lead the charge dollar wise. The upside you've got HubSpot up nearly two percent or ten bucks. Progressive Corp is up nearly eleven bucks or nine percent. Alta Beauty up two percent nine bucks. Saya Inc., the freight company, 2%, $9. There, and Broadcom up 1%. That's an $8 move. To the downside, it's Saks Parente Golf, down 80%, 23 bucks. I don't know who that is, but it's a stinger. Coherent, Co Coherent Corp is down 33%, another stinger there, down $16. Henry Jack and Associates, 7% or 12 bucks, 25% for VinFast Auto. And Waters Corp is down about 3%. That's a $8 move. But to start our day, we're going to go out to California and speak with Garo. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm very good, sir. How about you? Excellent. Thanks for asking. We're back to taking a look at uh, Square, I believe, right? SQ is a ticker symbol out here. Uh, tell the folks yes, what sir. you're doing. Yeah, tell yes, the folks sir. what you're doing and how I can best help you at this stage. Yes, sir. Uh, it is uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the daily chart on that. Uh, my uh, charting system shows there are two supports. One is support. The first support is 57.54. The okay. next one is 5772. I don't know if that matches with your numbers, but okay. that's what it says. And it's very close to that. I want to make sure, I want to not make sure, I want to see your idea regarding that. That is the bottom. It's going to build yes. the base there or it's going to go below than that. Okay, so uh, so we do have some numbers that are, are, are pretty close to uh, being in agreement, I believe. So I'm looking at the weekly time frame chart right now. I've got my white background charts up here. And what we'll notice on a weekly basis, I know you mentioned the daily, and I'll get to the daily momentarily. But what stuck out me as you were going through your review and identifying support in the 57-ish range out there, I have a, a daily TD9 count to breakout level at 57.78. So I show that as being a key area of support. And it can be a bottom. So this formed a TD9 count top. It uh, completed that pattern back on the, uh, this is a weekly chart we're looking at, the week of August the 4th. Uh, out here. And so if price closed below 57.78, then the next area I believe that I'd be looking at would be 42.33. So that's the first thing. As we get down to an area, I'd said on the weekly chart, price has gotten down towards that breakout level 57.78. When price does that, what I look for is on the shorter term time frame, see if we've got any kind of bottoming patterns. And here, voila, it turns out that yesterday was a TD9 count bottom. 
And that says that, Garo, as long as price does not close below yesterday's low, you could see a bottom and a bounce, or you should see a bottom and a bounce. And that bounce should at least take us up towards the 6424, 6478-ish type area. Now, today's going to be a key day for Square because our price closed below yesterday's low. And yesterday's low is 5813. Then that tells us about a further move lower. Now, what we don't know is whether or not it will actually bust through 5778, but that would be the signal that it would be sending to us. So we have on a weekly basis price getting back to a level of support that can be a bottom. We've got a daily TD nine count bottom pattern that came in yesterday. And really it's gonna be all about yesterday's low. Will it hold or not? And uh, so I, I think this one is pretty easy to call with regard to key levels of support or resistances at 5813 and obviously the 5778 on the uh, weekly, 5813 being yesterday's low. Any questions about those charts, Carl? No, everything was fine. I wrote it down. Uh, there was a 54 and something on a weekly chart. You said if that doesn't hold 57.78, the next one was 54 uh, 40, and change. Uh, 42.33. 42.33 would be. Yeah. 33. Very good. And, and Very that good. comes from that. That is so the both the monthly and the uh, weekly had TD9 count tops. And the uh, breakout level for the. Uh, for the monthly time frame would be that 42.33 area. So the first thing, the first level is watching yesterday's low. Right now we're trading below that, but we need to see where we're at at the end of the day, 58.13. 57.78 fails, and I say 42.33 would be where it would be, would be targeting, short of some other bottom yeah. pattern that we would see, and I don't have anything yeah. yet. Very good. I didn't have that number, so that I wrote everything down, you said, and Perfect. I'm going to be watching like a hawk and see what happens, because once it turns around and it starts to go up, then yes. I'm going to follow that. Uh, yeah. Ah, perfect. I appreciate perfect. it very much for your time and listening to me. Thank you, sir. Have a nice You bet. You bet. And Garo, thanks so much for calling. Always good to speak with Garo, who has his own set of charts on Stevie's system. You got to love that. So thanks for that call. Uh, let's uh, get back to uh, just the overview of the markets, where we're at in this next uh, minute or so. So to do that, let's switch over to uh, this set of charts here. I think this chart, this set of charts is probably important. It's very important. And that's where we're taking a look at the daily equity future contract. So on the upper left-hand side, you've got the ES Mini. You'll see the TD9 count bottom, 4447 is that key threshold level. If price closed below that, that says we head lower out here. Otherwise, we should see a rally. That rally should take us up to the 4533 level. It would be better for the ES if it closed back above the bottom or get back inside its profile at 4469. The NQ also forming a TD9 count bottom. That remains in effect unless price closed below 50. 1502075. Short of that, price should target the 15437-ish area. The Dow does not have any kind of a bottoming pattern out here. It's basically been trading sideways to lower, and so it could be targeting 34410. But if we take a look at the Russell 2000, today is going to complete its TD9 count bottom. I don't know where today's low will be. Whatever that low is, though, that's what you would mark on your pad of paper. If price closed below that, just like Garo and I did when we took a look at, at Square. If uh, the Russell 2000 were to close below today's low, whatever that is, tomorrow, that would negate that signal. And that would be telling us about a potential move back to the 1760 level. So three of the four equity future contracts have got TD9 count bottoms. Question is, do those levels hold? And if those levels hold, what we should see are rallies up towards those oscillator unchanged line levels. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at Snow, TTD, Newmont, Tesla, Natural Gas, ANET, Apple, and Microsoft. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so let's get to our, our first request out here. This is coming in from Sat P. Wants to take a look at uh, Snow, ticker symbol S N O S Snowflake, uh, ticker symbol S N O W. And the question is, he's looking for an entry point. Well, you've got it right here, right now. So if you're looking for an entry point, it's here. Why? Because what we've got is a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom completed yesterday. Um, as long as price does not close below, so it's an easy trade here. If price does not, if you would exit that trade, if price were to close below 150.07, uh, that would be that would negate that TD9 count bottom pattern and the reason why you would enter. So you could enter it now. Your price target, or at least your first target, is going to be the 157.80 area. The reason I have to say area is because if this uh, rallies, that number is going to go up. That number is coming from that oscillator unchanged line area. So you've got the daily bottom. If I look at a weekly, I'm not sorry, if I look at a 30-minute chart, just to confirm the daily bottom, what you have this morning is you've got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. That took place at 10 o'clock. So price went ahead, it pushed lower, it was testing. The CD9 count, uh, you've got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom pattern here. So you've got the confirmed buy signal right here, right now. So now is the time. Now, as far as a, as far as a, uh, uh, so your entry point, uh, you've got that. You're right around 150.80. Now, this on an average daily true range over the last 10 days has uh, gen is about six dollars and 15 cents. So 6.15 is the average true range out there. Where's the price target? Well, we said the price target was up right now at about 157.83 or thereabouts. So if you take the trade, it's going to be less than a one-to-one -one risk reward out there, um, uh, because that, what I use, what I would use for your average true range, you've got six dollars and fifteen cents as I as I mentioned, but you need to use some type of Fibonacci expansion. You use either 1.272 or 1.618. I always use 1.618. I typically would, would uh, fall back on that. But that's just your first price target. Your real price target out here is 172.80. And 172.80 would be its TD9 count breakdown level. Now, 172.80, your reward risk on that gets up to about 2.1 to 1 out there. So that would, you know, you've got really, you've got your first resistance zone and battleground at 157.80-ish area. And then if price can close above the oscillator and change line, that would be signaling to you and I move up to the 172.80 area. So you've got your entry point inside of Snowsat and everybody else that's uh, out there. Make sure you use proper position sizing, which would be about 10 shares per $10,000 of free trading capital out there. 
So that's what I'd be taking a look at. Your next request was to take a look at, and this is for uh, Sat P. Uh, his next request was to take a look at um, TD, TTD out here. TTD, which is uh, also in the process of completing a TD nine count bottom today. This is the trade desk. So uh, you where's your entry point? It, it basically could be right here. Now let's take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart, see if there was some kind of bottom out here. And the, um, what do you got? You've got a Rhodesman to indicator bottom. That uh, went ahead and confirmed at 10.30. It follow through at 11. Price right now is consolidating with inside that profile. It could back down to the bottom of the profile at 73.32. The top is acted as resistance at 74.18. But if you clear that, it should be on its merry way to higher ground. So you're getting the bottoming signals that you're looking for. You want it inside of TTD. Now, the average price movement on TTD is uh, $2.87. That's, again, over the uh, last 10-day uh, period. This is trading right now at 73.36. Stick this in my little calculator system here. And our price target would be, again, it would be that oscillator and change line at this stage, 81.12 would be the uh, level. So um, this would give you about a 1.6 to 1 reward risk. So buck 60, uh, I, oh, I said it's 287. So 287 times either 1.272 or 1.618, that would be about 22 shares per every 10,000 in free trading capital. Now, if price closes below today's low, and sad, I don't know what today's low is going to be. I know what it is right now. I just don't know what it will be at the end of the day. But right now, that low is... 7280. Let's assume that low holds. A close below that would have you get out of the trade. A close, not a not price intraday test it, but a close below because that pattern would get negated. And if that gets negated, that tells us that we're likely headed back maybe towards a 6456 level out there. But right now you were looking for an entry point while well, you've got the TD9s to help you out. And I hope that that helped you out with both, which it should have, with both of those trades. That was for Sat P inside the Tiger's Den. And thanks so much for the request. The so next request from Tom G coming in by email as well uh, and he's looking for an entry point into Newmont Mining. His question is, is right here right now an entry point at 3837? And I wish I knew the answer to that question. If I answered that question only by looking at the Newmont Mining charts out here, my answer to that would be no. Why would that be no? It would be no because we don't have any kind of a bottoming pattern on a daily time frame. In fact, what we had was yesterday, was it yesterday that, no? Yeah, it was, uh, no, I take that back. It was on uh, Monday that the uh, its TD9 count bottom was negated. So uh, and on a weekly basis, I don't have any kind of bottom. I have price perhaps trading back into support. And support would be the low from November 4th. That low out there is 37.45. On a monthly basis, price is below profile support, so it could be targeting 32.86. Now, I was I, I said I wish I knew if it was going to form a bottom. The issue here is that Newmont Mining will move with gold, or should move with gold. So, if you're asking me, does Newmont Mining have a bottoming signal that says that you should take the uh, trade now? The answer would be no. If I go to the 30-minute time frame chart, which I'm going to do here. We've got a roads, we've got a TD9 count bottom and a roads momentum indicator signal. This says we should see a rally. However, if price closes below the low of the day so far, the low of the day on Newmont Mining, let me just give that to you. I just need to move this over here. The low of the day is at 38.21. You get a close below that. That tells us that Newmont Mining is headed lower. What should transpire here is if price can clear this oscillator and change line, we're seeing that's what it's dealing with right now. And that's uh, Tom at 38.32. We should at least see a rally up into the 38.92 level. Now, the caveat with regard to any of the mining equities, quite frankly, is what is gold going to do? And that was really the hesitation, Tom. And the reason was because what we've got in Goldilocks is we've got TD9 count bottom patterns out here. In fact, we've got it for gold and silver. If I just switch over and I throw up these charts, I believe we'll get them. Uh, now, this is going to show uh, gold, silver, the GLD, SLV. So it's got all everything daily and weekly for each of them. What you're going to see here is in the upper left on the daily time frame, you've got that TD9 count bottom for gold. As long as that remains in effect here, and it remains in effect as long as price continues to close above 1934.20, we should at least see a rally to the 1951 level. Silver's also got that TD9 count bottom. So if we do start to see gold and silver rally, uh, although Newmont Mining won't have a bottoming signal, 
it likely will rally as well. And that's where this gets a little bit dicey and tricky. But to answer your specific question about Newmont Mining, and we just take a look at that chart, we don't pay attention to gold or silver. The answer was no, other than on that 30-minute time frame out there. But you've got some pretty good parameters, I think, Tom, to help you out for the rest of the day. So thanks much for taking the time to write in. Let's go to our next question out here. This is from Coda inside the Tigers and wanted to take a look at Tesla. Now, what Tesla did yesterday was it negated its TD9 count bottom. It did it immediately. It did it in one day's time. So what that tells us, Coda, is we should see Tesla continue to move lower. Now, on a daily basis, its next area of support would be at 195.12. That's a TD9 count breakout level. The, what Tesla also needs to do to confirm that signal that it's going to get down there, it has to close below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. 231.93 is the number I'd have on my pad of paper there, Coda. If price closes below that, then odds favor Tesla continues to head lower out there. That's what I see when I take a look at the daily and the weekly charts for Tesla. We get back from this break, we're going to take a look at natural gas, ANET, Apple, and Microsoft. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back up, for folks. Uh, what we're first going to do is we're going to go take a look at the GDX. We had a caller, Dave in Framingham. Dave, my apology for not uh, picking up on uh, and seeing that you were on hold there. That, that's my fault. That's on me. But I know that you were calling about the uh, GDX. You're welcome to call back in, but I'll cover this uh, for you. And hopefully I'll, uh, I'll, I'll review your question. So what took place yesterday in the GDX was price closed below its TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom formed on uh, August the 8th. The low of that pattern was at 28.67. Price closed below that yesterday. It negated the signal. That would have been the reason to have been long the GDX out there. So at this stage here, out of any kind of a bottom pattern, there's an A to B equals CD that is in place out here. If we generate or it generates a bullish reversal candle, that would then confirm uh, a Gartley butter butterfly pattern out there because we've extended past the uh, swing point here from June the uh, 29th. So the next pattern, next viable pattern that I see that would be uh, printing inside the GDX would be a bullish reversal candle that would then generate the uh, buy the D point, which would in this case here create a, a Gartley butterfly buy. On a weekly basis, price right now is trading below last week's uh, profile, uh, be below the bottom of its profile. That's at 29.12 and a close below that would also suggest lower price. As far as lower price is concerned, when we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it brings into play 23.53 to 25.54. Very much like Newmont Mining, though, uh, Dave, is that if uh, you've got gold and silver, they've got those TD9 count bottoms. If they take hold, then we should see the GDX stocks move up. That's not a really a great tool, let's say, to say, go ahead and take a long position inside the GDX. I just need to make you aware of that. And on a 30-minute basis, if we take a look at the GDX as an example, We've got gold and silver still trading right at or just above their TD9 count breakout areas. You've got TD9 count bottoms on the uh, GDX for its 30 minute time frame. And if price were to close above 2856, that could be signaling something to us, but we'll have to go figure out what that something is by take a look at gold and silver and so forth. So at this stage here, if you were long, I, you know, I'd, I'd close it out or at least have a stop below some low, maybe today's low or what have you. But the reasons to be in, they failed yesterday, Dave. So I hope that helps you out. If not, uh, please call back and, and we'll make sure that, uh, that I get to your call. So I hope that that helped you. And uh, thanks so much for the uh, call out there. Um, I'm going to do this here. I'm going to take a look at Coda. We'll go to natural gas after uh, this. Uh, otherwise, I, I, I'll kind of screw up my place holder here. So I'm going to take a look at ANET for uh, 007 inside the Tiger's Den. That's James Bond. 777 Jack is the uh, code word that he goes by. But I know that's got to be James Bond. It's Jack Bond. If we take a look at ANET out here, ANET trading at about 181.34. And uh, the thing, question was really just to take a look at it. And this is Arista Networks. And Arista Networks is trading with inside its daily profile. I don't see any kind of a bottoming pattern, if anything. It negated a TD9 count top a couple of weeks ago on the trading day of August the 1st with some big wide wide price movement and pretty good volume in this uh, position. 16 million shares on average does a couple million a day. Trading with inside the profile, no topping signal, trading, trading above its green oscillator and change line. Uh, Jack, this suggests the run back for the 186.50 level. On a weekly time frame, no topping signal above profile, above its oscillator and change line. This suggests a further move higher. On a monthly basis, a close above at the end of the month, a close above 178.36 would negate its, its uh, TD9 now, top price is trading above a new profile that formed last night at 178.36. Everything on Arista Networks looks pretty hunky-dory. But you do have some battles, that's for sure. And that battle is up at the 186.50 level. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Arista Networks. And uh, thanks so much for writing in, uh, Jack. Uh, we're going to go take a look at natural gas right now, which is trading back uh, towards its um, uh, weekly uh, a daily profile support level. We should be able to pick that up here on these charts. And that daily profile support, I'll just simply expand out the chart or delete it. Now, that was really smart, Steve-O. Good Lord. Let me just see if I any chance that I didn't delete it. Looking at another screen, another screen, maybe right here. Pick this up. What do we got? Okay, good. All right. So I didn't delete it. I just minimized it. Thank you. Now we're going to go ahead and expand it out. So here's what we've got going on inside of the uh, inside of uh, natural gas. So you can see the A to B equals CD pattern. Did it actually complete it? Let me see. I don't think it did, but let me see. So here's A to B. I'm going to move this over to the C point out here so that we can grab it. That would be right there. And it really didn't make that A to B equals CD. Okay. So I don't know why it topped the where, where it did. In other words, well, I take that. No, I, I really don't know why it topped where it did. 
Doesn't matter. That's not what we're dealing with here right now, is it? What we're dealing with is what the heck is price doing? And Coda, what price is doing is pointing back into its bullish structured profile level. That's between 251 and 256 out there. That's what's going on in the daily time frame. Now, when you're pointing back into a support structured area, what you like to see if that area is going to hold is are there bottoming signals on the intraday charts? So we've got the 30-minute chart is the smallest time frame that I've got in this set of uh, patterns out here. Give me a second here. And if we take a look at it, you've got a Rosemontum indicator bottom pattern that is attempting to form. Uh, we've got, uh, it's 1136, so we won't know till 9 a.m. If it does form, then the next area of resistance for natural gas is going to be 259, above that 2.609, and then above that 2.624. So this is suggesting we should see a little bit of a rally. Maybe it was a bottom on the daily time frame. Let's continue with these uh, uh, intraday charts. A 60-minute chart is a wave number seven pattern out there. That just needs a higher low. That's not going to happen until the earliest that that could happen would be by 1 o'clock. But this also has a Rosemontum indicator signal. And if at 12 noon we have a bullish reversal candle, at the moment it's a hammer candle. I don't know whether a hammer candle sticks at 12 noon or not. Um, but if it does, that would confirm a bottom. The 120-minute negated a TD9 count, that's not confirming a bottom. You're in bar number 8 on a 240. That's going to take uh, several hours before that could confirm a bottom. No bottom signal on the five-hour chart. So natural gas, it's a, this is a doozy. This is a, this is a struggle out here. Um, you trade into the support area, so here's how you trade it. If that is a bottom, you'll start to see resistance levels fail out here, and the resistance level that we need to fail on the 30-minute uh, time frame, I'd have to say, would be $2.64. I'll call it 265 is where price would have to uh, move through. So hope that helps you out, uh, Coda, and uh, thanks so much for the uh, request. Uh, let's go back to the phone lines. Is it Garo that we have on the line, or is it Dave? David. David. David, thanks so much for calling back. Hey, I appreciate th it. Thanks for taking. Thanks. Thank you for taking my call. Sure, uh, sure. Real quick, I'm looking at the on the GDX. There's a gap of 28 back on March uh, 13th. There, does that have to get filled? I mean, it looks like it wants to get filled. So uh, I'm going to pull up. I'm uh, pulling up the GDX charts right now. So on give a me a moment. Chart, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, does it have to get filled? Um, March 13th area there. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're looking at. And the price point that he's looking at would be 27.95. If price okay. got down to 27.95, it would fill. The actual low so far today has been 28.03. Does it have yeah. to get filled? Um, yeah, does it have I, to get filled? I would say if the following conditions were to form, if we got a bullish reversal candle at day's end, you could get a small little bullish hammer candle. And as long as gold holds its TD9 count bottom as well as uh, silver, then my answer to that would be no, we don't have to because you'd have a really? buy the D point pattern. But, um, but, it, but it would be nice for it to get filled out there. But does it have to? It, it does it only from the standpoint of that directional correlation between gold, silver, and the mining equities. We're going to a hard break here. You're welcome to hang on. We can talk Thank about you. this further. Okay. This is Steve Rhodes with Thank TFNN. You. you bet. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Dave in Framingham, Massachusetts. We're taking a look at the charts here for the GDX. His question is, does the gap need to be filled? The gap he's looking at is one that formed on March the 13th when price gapped up. And, and before I went to break, uh, what I said was no. And the reason I said no was because of the correlation that uh, gold has with regard to the GDX, silver as well. And Dave, I always like to prove my points with facts. If that gap has to be filled, then we should be asking ourselves, well, how about the gap that formed back here on November 14, 2022? Gigantic gap. That hasn't been filled. I can go back 2016 and show you gaps that haven't been filled. I can go back even further than that with regard to the GDX. So factually speaking, historically speaking, analyzing the stock charts out there, the answer is no. At least with regard to the GDX, it'll be, in fact, if we if we go take a look at the correlation here, I'm going to go ahead and switch screens and you'll just see now this is a three day correlation out here that we're taking a look at right now. Top portion of the chart is a GDX, center portion is gold. And what this is taking a look at is the correlation between the two, the directional correlation. When the bars are above zero, which the majority of these bars are, 90% of these bars are above zero, it tells you about a directional correlation over a three day period of time. So GDX is gonna be more influenced, Newmont Mining is gonna be more influenced by the direction of gold and silver than it is with regard to where gaps are present. Does that make sense? Uh, the other quick question is the UUP, the dollar. Okay, okay. the dollar, real quick. Yeah. It topped what? out at 28.72 in June. Now we made a double top at 28.75 about three days ago. I believe the dollar is topped out here. So, so is that going to help the, uh, if that starts dropping here, the dollar, it's going to help, correct? It, you see it, that it, same it will thing? help. It, it, it will help. Does it? Does it? Uh, at least at this stage here, there's still a pretty good correlation between the U.S. dollar index and and the my and gold out here. Okay. The question is, has it topped out? So on a daily time frame, if you would ask me, do I have a topping pattern? The answer is no. But when we take a look okay. at the weekly chart, and that's the upper right hand panel that we're looking at right now. You can see the okay. descending trend line. Uh, which prices run into, and you can see that price is trading with inside a bearish structured weekly profile. So in order for the dollar to break out or to not have topped out, you need to see a weekly close above 103.49. You really need to see two close, but one would uh, start that uh, chain reaction. Charlie, what yeah. I do expect, so I just wanna, I'm gonna just lay this out for you. What I do expect to take place 
gold's really going to move because of issues with regard to lack of confidence in governments, which it seems like we're really headed down that road here. That's when it will okay. really move out here. And when that happens, what you should see, what we will see is we will see gold and the U.S. dollar and the mining equities all move, uh, all move north all at the same time. And, and, you know, the proof of that is gold or the dollar bottomed in 2008 and gold's much higher than it was in 2008. So gold, in theory, has been rallying, as has the U.S. dollar index. But right now, to answer your question, yes, it would be better if the U.S. dollar index were pulling lower than it is uh, that it was headed lower. So that would that would be helpful. But but I think we're getting towards a period of time, let's say over the next 12 months, I don't know when it will kick in, that uh, we'll see all three of those things rise at the same time. Yeah, because I was looking at the UUP here where it topped out at 28.75 as a double top. You see yeah. the same thing that I'm looking at? Well, I'll go. So I'll go take a look at the UUP charts, but the UUP is getting its calls and its action from you know its other charts. What really, when we take a look, even when I just go take a U.S. dollar index, I'm being unfair because we really have to see what's going on with the underlying instruments. We, you know, in order for the here, here's what I can say with certainty: in order for the U.S. dollar index to top, we need to see the euro form a bottom. And that okay. needs a bullish reversal candle. I don't know that we have that in place just yet. But do I see that double top inside the U.S. dollar index and UUP? I do. But I'll take more of my calls, not from the ETF, but instead what the uh, uh, instruments are doing, what the euro is doing, which we won't have time to take a look at uh, today. Okay. But what okay. the euro, the end. But I'll definitely do that tomorrow. I did that yesterday. So if okay. you go watch... If you were to go watch yesterday's replay, you will see the evaluation that I do with regard to trying to understand what the U.S. dollar index is doing out there. And okay. that's a better that's a better place for us to spend our time. Okay. okay? Thank you very much, Steve. Oh, my thank pleasure. You. Yeah, And thank you thank so much for calling back. And sorry that I didn't get to your call when you first called. That was Charlie in Framingham. Let's go on to our next request out here. This is for Nancy inside the Tiger Zone. She wants to take a look at Apple. Now, Apple has a TD9 count bottom pattern. Nancy, that TD9 count bottom uh, formed, uh, well, the low of that bottom is on August 11th. That's your key level to be watching. That's at 176.55. It's trying right now to form a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It doesn't really need to. But what you really need to see Apple do is get back inside its profile levels. And right now it's struggling at 178.13. 178.13 is a real key level of resistance or a key level of support. Because both the center and the bottom, uh, oh, it's Charlie, not David, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry about making that mistake. Um, in any event out here, uh, if we take a look at, uh, if we take a look, so that, both the center and bottom are at that 178.13 area. So that should have been strong support. Yesterday it broke through it. We're gonna have two days below it. If we have two days below it, even though we've, it, it, you'd, you'd be more neutral than bullish. And if price closed below that TD9 count bottom, Nancy, you're asking where price is going to head to. 175.31 would be the first stop, and 170.48, 170.42 could be the next stop down. But right now, you've got valid bottom patterns out there, and that has to get negated in order for price to head lower. Your next request was to take a look at Microsoft. MSFT is the ticker symbol out here. As we take a look at Microsoft, I don't have any kind of a bottom. Yeah except that could form that today. What would that be? That's the A to B equals CD pattern. So let's take a look at A to B. Let's draw that in there. Let's just simply move that line over to the C point out here. Give me a moment. There's our C point. You can see this is more than a one to one A to B equals CD. So that's probably one to 1.272. If you get a bullish reversal candle today, and right now it's a bullish engulfing, that's at 1148. What's it at 4 p.m.? I don't know. But if you did get that, we should see a move up into the oscillator and change line around the 327-ish range and above that 330.36. And if price can clear, that's the top of its uh, bearish structure daily profile. Price can clear that, Nancy, you're off to 335.71. So uh, watch the day's action on uh, Microsoft. If you get that bullish reversal candle, then this is likely going to at least bounce up to that oscillator on change line. The next request came in from Phil inside the Tiger's Den, I believe it was. He wanted to take a look at Target out here. So what do we have for Target? Uh, Target negated a TD9 count bottom yesterday, but what still has held, it was testing the lows here from June 12th. And that was a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, and only a close below that low, that would be 125.08, which suggests that we're headed lower. Now, volume back then was about 8.2 million shares. Yesterday, this did volume as it was moving down with 9.4 million shares. 
So likely that candle is going to get tested again. And if price closes below this red oscillator and change line, that's at 129.19 then um, odds would favor a retest of that area. As far as where resistance is at, the key level of resistance inside of Target is 136.54. Price can close above that, you're headed higher. Price was also testing the weekly TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Now, on a weekly basis, the volume was 50 million shares. So far this week in Target, we are down with 27 million shares. So this could be testing that swing point on lighter volume out there. But if that fails, if all of that fails to hold, then we'll be looking at out here, Phil, is a move back to 106.10. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Sorry, folks, a quick run through. I was on the wrong set of charts out there. Uh, let's take a look at the tar target out here. You can see price right now trading below that red oscillator and change line in the daily time frame. It was testing that uh, swing low from back here on June the 12th, so likely that's going to be retargeted. It may only be the high that gets targeted at 127.39, but that's the target. You can see the uh, weekly roads momentum indicator, TD9 count bottom. Again, you get closes below those levels, those levels out there. Again, uh, price point is at uh, 125.08. That would suggest we 
we head to the 106.10 area. For Nancy, it was with regard to uh, Microsoft. If we take a look at uh, Microsoft out there, uh, this is a bullish engulfing candle as we speak. There's your C, there's your B to your C to D uh, leg out here that I've got drawn in there that would create a buy the D point pattern with one of the 327 area being a uh, price target. And back to Apple out here. Apple has a TD9 count bottom that formed a few days ago. This should take price up to the Sasser and change line, the 182 level. But right now, price is struggling with that uh, bottom of that profile, 178.13 out there. So sorry that I didn't have the uh, chart showing, but we got that uh, solved out here. The last uh, request uh, coming in from the Tigers Den. McGuppy wants to take a look at IONQ out here. I thought I had that. I think it's uh, in position one. Here we go. So IONQ. IONQ could be forming an A to B equals CD to the downside today. All it needs to do is close below this low. This low is the August 9th low of 1410. If it could do it with more than 12 million shares right now, we've got uh, 9.2. It's going to have more than uh, it's going to have more than the shares. So if it closes below that low, and again that low out here for IONQ is 1410, you'll have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Uh, where I give you the estimated price projection on that because I'm just using my align tool out here, but it would be somewhere in the 1166 area. It turns out at 1222 you've got the bottom of its weekly profile support. So you close below that low, I believe, McGuppy, this is headed to the 1222 or lower level. And that's in tip, ticker symbol I-O-N-Q. So folks, stay tuned for all the great programming we have lined up. Please have a wonderful Wednesday, and I'll look forward to seeing you on Terrific Tuesday. Thanks for the call, Dave. Thanks for the call, Garo. And thanks for all the requests inside the Tiger Stand and by email. There may even be a few more by email that I didn't get to, I hope not. Looks like we're pretty good. So, folks, have a great day, and I'll see you on Terrific Thursday. Take care.